my taste in women can really only be described as bland. Think of a stereotypical traditional wife-like person. Soft-spoken, kinda shy, thin, polite, calm, good cook, big, 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 humongous generosity and personality, and even bigger t- So there's a trope in anime girls that I unexpectedly liked, the gyaru. They are the exact opposite of my taste, except for the big, um, personality. That is what I was gonna say. I don't know what it is exactly about them, but that subsect of the romance genre always really intrigued me. I know the trope is often trashy and poorly done, but I guess you can say I have a soft spot for them and a harder, tougher spot for their softer spots. Okay, I really gotta stop being a perv. But speaking of pervs, that is another trope that often accompanies these girls. And pervy protag plus anime waifu is equal to shitty guilty pleasure anime. So when I first watched the 2023 anime, Our Dating Story, The Experienced You and Inexperienced Me, I thought I was in for that fun guilty pleasure. And while a lot of that still did hold up, this show unexpectedly had some really good things about it. So today, I know Boakoa will be talking to you about Our Dating Story, The Experienced You and Inexperienced Me, and why it is terrible, but also not that bad. Watch till the end because I have some things that I think are valid to say about the emotional aspects of the show. And if you come to agree with me or just enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe. It helps a lot. On the surface, this story seems similar to too many others. Guy who is a nerdy loser under some unimportant circumstances gets together with a popular girl and that girl comes to actually like him through his masculine chivalry filled with the machismo of any cool dude. And because it is a genre. While they are dating, they go through the many troubles of youthful relationships and eventually pull through with the power of plot armor and love. You may have noticed that none of the clips I just used were from the actual show. That is because so many other shows do the exact same thing. We start with a cold opening of our very own gal, Shirakawa Runa, undressing in front of Kashima Ryuto, our boy. He asks what she is doing and she says, I thought we were gonna... Bedtime fun time. Then we get some good old exposition dump about our cum dump. Or that is a rumor. Rumors say that she has had an abundant amount of relationships. And then Rito goes on about how he's just a loner loser freak and never has a chance with someone like Shirokawa Runa. And this brings me to the first flaw of the show. Rito is another pathetic protag. She asks for a pencil and then he starts doing this. Luckily, he gets a little better as the show goes on, but I wish they just not use that trope. I think the reason show often do this is because they think that the viewers are pathetic like the protag and therefore relatable, which is just an insult at that point. They need to realize that it is okay to give your main character, who is supposed to be the main selling point, an actual personality. Another theory I have is that they are just too lazy to write in good natural growth, so they make the character as much of a loser as possible so that even a little improvement seems relatively massive. The second problem I have with the show is its references to modern culture. They try way too hard to appeal to its demographics and therefore comes off as really unnatural. Almost like if a corporate drone made a TV ad to what they think kids are like. Look at this whole interaction where they really shove in our face that they are gals. <laughs> Who the fuck has ever talked like that? And this continues with the geek buddies. Rito and his buddies are kinda geeky gamers and they try really hard to make them seem like the stereotypical gamers. It's honestly kinda cute how hard they try. It might have honestly been more subtle to just say, Hey, I'm a gamer. I game. Gaming is poggers. Any gamers here? No? Sag. Not so peepo pog. Then his friends make Ryuto confess to the girl he likes because they did bad on the test and want to feel better about themselves. Jesus, what horrible friends. And they continue to all be assholes. I know it may not seem like it so far, but I do have good things to say about the show, so don't worry. He confesses, Shirakawa agrees, and she takes him to her house. After the dialogue on their way home, I think that the show gets a lot of the emotions right. 
Shirakawa explains that it feels good when someone says, I like you, someone say that to me please, and that makes her like them back a little more. And even though that feeling is a little shallow, she doesn't seem to mind because the shallow feelings can become something more. So she is willing to give it a shot. And that is a very accurate depiction of what relationships often are. While there are people who only want to go out with people who they already have a strong bond with, there are also people who want to cultivate that bond together and eventually come to like them. This gives me a new refreshing feeling that diverts from the often naive relationships in anime. They get to her house and we end up in the scene of the cold opening. She starts undressing, but he doesn't want sex. He thinks that they are moving too fast. And because Shirakawa never had an experience like this where the guy refuses and wants to wait until they get to know each other better, she's a tad bit confused. She always thought that it was her duty as a girlfriend to engage in intercourse with the guy and she never thought about whether she herself wanted it or not. It's implied that Shirakawa's exes were all just using her for her body and she kinda seems to be aware. But that brings me to another emotional aspect the show gets right. Shirakawa is afraid to be alone. With her parents being divorced and both of them being working adults, she often doesn't see anyone at home. So she fills that gap in her heart and between her legs by filling it with other dudes both literally and figuratively. Wow, that sounded weird. But that is kinda what she did. I also promised that was the last horny joke here, I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote this. Anyways, it's natural for her to genuinely fall in love with the one person who has shown her any sort of decency. And I just realized, but I've been painting Ryuto in a good light. In a perfect world, he would be a normal person, maybe even a little nerdy, but normal and able to have regular human interactions. But this is anime we are talking about. Ryuto is a dickhead, and even after being nice and not using her for her body, this dude regrets it and is saying how he should have just done it. If you're trying to get the audience to root for him, maybe don't do that? Also, his friends were bad before, but they have evolved, or rather devolved, to being reddit incels. They're saying how Shirakawa is just a slut using him as a toy for a night and that he should have just went through with it. Runa's best friend, Nicole, is also not that good of a friend. She is shown to care about Runa and is very cautious of Ryuto because of it, but at the same time, where the hell was she for all the past boyfriends who were obviously using her for her body? The friends in the show are all either shitty or seriously incompetent people. Well then again, there is gamer goth weeb girl who might just be best girl. I'll save that for later. They go out on dates, get to know each other better, and we get a flashback from Ryuto a couple times about getting rejected by a girl. And by her character design alone, we know that she'll have a bigger part later in the show. And sure enough, as I suspected, that girl transfers schools to the one Ryuto goes to in the very same episode. Maybe they could have been a little more subtle with it? Kurose Maria, the perfect elegant girl, has rejected Ryuto before, but now, she wants to fuck that boy. She also happens to be Shirakawa's half-sister, and there's some drama with her that ultimately is just the shit Ichika from Quintessential Quintuplets does. She doesn't like Shirakawa because Shirakawa was always ahead of her and outgoing, so she sabotages her by disguising herself as Shirakawa and tries to fuck him. Yeah, she basically does an Ichika, but I think Ichika's reasoning was actually kinda justified and I might do a video on it in the future. I know I've teased this a lot, but I'm working on a bigger video about an anime I'm really passionate about, so please be patient with me. Anyways, she's a bitch. Shirakawa wants to be closer to her and Ryuto helps her with that. She also plays a part in the final arc where rumors start that Ryuto is cheating on Shirakawa with Kurose, but other than that, she plays almost no part in the show. At the very least, her voice acting is killer as always from Aoi Koga, who voiced Kaguya from Love is War, the pink bitch from Masho, and many more. And I really hate having to say this for so many shows, but the whole thing they did with her doesn't really matter. Even the conflicts that sprung from her weren't really because it was her specifically, and more because they needed someone to fill that role. Kurose was really just a random asset that they overused since they already paid for it. And so yeah, the plot is honestly on the bad side, and like I said earlier, this show is also bad. I don't want to dwell on the plot too much, so I'll rapid fire the rest to make a really gross disgusting oversimplification of it. And because it would be boring for me to just say it, I'll do it like a little skit this time. Oh 
boy, am I a horny loser weeb gamer who is also very horny loser. Hey, bitch, go ask out the girl, loser. You are just such a loser and don't deserve anything in life. And you will become the joke of the school as she will just use you as her boy toy. Fucking geek. Um, hey, I like you. Will you, um, be, by chance, um, uh, go, 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 go out with me? Hey, wanna fuck? Lol, no, I'm a pussy. Yun, doki doki. Your life literally is as valuable as a summer ant. I'm just gonna stomp you, you're gonna keep coming back, I'm gonna seal up all my cracks, you're gonna keep coming back, why? Cause you keep smelling the syrup, you worthless geek. Your life is nothing, you serve zero purpose. You, you should, should kill-, kill Hey, wanna fuck? No law, I have a girlfriend. I'm so jealous of my sister, I will now proceed to ruin your relationship. So hey, Ryuto. Kiss me, bitch. Ryuto, how could you? It's okay, baby girl. You know I only have eyes for you. I know we can get through this together. So now, baby girl, you want some fuck? <clears throat> While again, that is an insane oversimplification of what actually happened, it isn't that far-fetched either. That whole sequence is honestly what happens, and that is a really bad plot. But there is something that makes it somewhat good. The relationship between Shirakawa and Ryuto, or rather, the thing Shirakawa feels about Ryuto. Ryuto is just a typical rom-com pathetic protagoon who worries about things like indirect k k k kisses, premarital <laughs> hand-holding, and other things of that sort. But him being a loser somewhat works out. Because he is a geeky loser, he hasn't had many real-life experiences, and being with Shirakawa has given him some of that springful youth that he has been missing out on. And they really come to love each other, but Shirakawa feels as if she isn't able to give him anything. She feels as if she isn't able to experience the magic of firsts with him because she has done a lot of these things with past boyfriends. She has had her first kiss, first time in bed, first time going to a festival, and she would love to experience with Ryuto, but just can't. And it's really heart-wrenching to think that she has wasted all of her magical moments with other guys who never cared for her, and therefore can't give those special moments to the first person who actually did. It's a really deep antithesis from a literary standpoint where Ryuto, who never had the chance to experience these things, gets to have that ephemeral beauty of firsts, while Shirakawa, who experienced it many times prior but didn't enjoy it, isn't able to get that same spark. And I really love the fact that they actually wrote her to be experienced almost too experienced in that field. The typical trope is that the Gyaru who acts all bad girl who doesn't care about things and has sex a lot isn't actually all that. In shows like Tsurezu the Children, more than a married couple but not lovers, or even fucking Citrus, the gal is actually really innocent and isn't all that bad. But that trope gets really boring after a while and this show had an unexpectedly refreshing take on that trope. While I approve of the main relationship, Every other one is bad. The B-plot of Nicole with her boyfriend was very boring, and even after just watching it, I can't remember anything about it. They had no reason to be together except the fact that the writers wanted them to. Their whole thing had no substance and just made things a lot more convoluted than it needed to be. With the extra time they had to fill with two randos, they could have like written in another date between Shirakawa and Ryuto, or have a stupid slice of life filler about any one of the characters, but instead, you get a stupid convoluted side plot about stupid characters and their stupid relationship. The other relation is between Gamer Goth Girl and Loser Geek Friend A. Hey, I love Goth Gamer Girls, and I love her too, but I just hate the friend way too much. I know it was supposed to be a little gag where he's fat and becomes skinny and hot, but I just really don't want him to find happiness, let alone a gamer goth girlfriend. And yeah, obviously I thought the show was shitty along with almost every other rom-com, but its main relationship was surprisingly interesting. So if you are interested, I suggest you go and check it out. I think the show could have used a way better plot, which is why I didn't think it was a good show. But it's an interesting take on this overused premise, so I'll give it a thumbs up, but only up like 30 degrees. So finally, you know the question I need to answer. Who is best girl? Do I even need to say it? 
It's Shirakawa. She was fun, kind, and genuinely cared for Ryuto. I really felt for her and even somewhat with her, even though I am personally not a gata girl who has been with many guys who struggles to give any first to my boyfriend. And as stupid as that sounds, that says a lot. You should be able to feel for and with a good written character. And this show does just that. So now, you know a complete online stranger's opinion on our dating story, the inexperienced me and experienced you. My name is Noobo Okoa, I want a relationship like that, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, YouTube thinks that you might also like this one. Or, you can watch this video of me talking about the most underrated genre of anime. Again, thank you for watching.